Mr. Fernando is a head of international partnerships and global speaker at Semrush. With more than 10 years of experience in digital marketing, he is the official influencer marketing trainer of the prestigious Brighton SEO. He trained marketing teams of companies such as Xperia, T-Mobile, Presta Shop, and Bing, among others. And he also established the first influencer marketing team at Semrush which has around 200 influencers from more than 20 countries. As an active member of SEMrush marketing team, Mr. Fernando specialized in B2B search marketing, e-commerce, community intelligence, and influential marketing. During his section and workshop, he immediately involves the audience with his energy, sense of humor, and a large number of practical examples and real cases. Thank you. Thank you for that, that introdu introduction. I'm here um, transmitting from uh, Croatia. I'm in a different part of the world uh, t today. I'm always traveling a lot, and I always try to identify what are the new opportunities to rank uh, higher on the SERP. Because, as you know, in on SEO, on search engine optimization, be um, on the top of the list, be on the first page of Google is the thing. Be on the first place, second place, third place. But there are another kind of uh, new features on those search, on the search uh, engine. Um, that's what I'm going to tell you today. So think. This is us. This is SEMrush. We are kind of um, celebrating our anniversary last year, 10 years in the market. We have six offices all over the world and more than 500 employees. And we make a lot of data science. We make a lot of research, and today we want to present you one of them. First question of today, what type of content do you usually search? Because I was telling that I will, I, I'm traveling all the time uh, for different conferences, I would like to um, show you what I'm usually search. So first thing that I search is, of course, when I'm entering to a new hotel, to a new uh, apartment room, for example, is, uh, can I drink tap water? in that place for example i made a search uh, a couple of weeks ago on um on a on, on a meetup with uh, our friends from red bandley uh, that is um, can i can i drink tap water in dublin and i have two results here the first one is a beautiful box that is called um, feature snippet and the second one is uh, another very interesting box that is called people also ask so my the answer for my question uh, came in two boxes. First one, the feature snippet that is telling me a preview of the information that I want to receive. The second one is telling me maybe something related to my first search query, uh, something that is chasing my intent. So is sink water bad to drink? Can you drink water from the bathroom sink? Can you drink tap water in Cork or in so some other locations? So some related questions to my first search query. But okay, where is the first result? Oh, there, there is it. Is that water Dublin or uh, Ireland? Self? So it's a quarter result in the third place. So that's not the third rank, that's the first rank. But as you can see here, it's not good enough today to be in the first place. You need to be in the position zero or in the people also ask box because that's what Google is showing today for the first results. Okay, we're talking about um, SEO, we're talking about organic results, we're not talking about uh, ads, but of course, this um, results also appears with different kind of ads, and we're gonna see that. So, how we can be here, that's the big question, how we can transform our content and be finally here as a result of our content. So we need to create some kind of content that is really good for people because this guy, this is the content that I was searching. This is my, um, I'm really satisfied with this result because this is solving my, my, my query, uh, content for Google. So we analyzed 6.9 million feature snippets, those uh, big boxes, beautiful boxes. And of course, we also analyzed 80 million keywords here on, uh, on SEMrush. So that's how we can find out how, may, how good or how bad are the results that you can uh, change on your web page, on the content of your web page. 
let's see the <clears throat> let's see the brightest part. Why do you need these feature snippets? Why how, why they are so important? So first of all, if you have a feature snippet, you will have more traffic. Why? Because they are big, beautiful, and they are really, really um, understandable. So the information that is there is really good. But of course, it's not all the information. If you want really fast information, of course, you're going to go for a feature as a snippet. But if you want or need more information, that's why people are going to uh, make that click on that result. And if people, if uh, they're going to click on that result, so that's going to increase your CTR. Yes, you're, you're going to receive more clicks and people are going to go to your page. And so often a lot of people say, okay, but these feature snippets are stealing the traffic from my, uh, from my keywords. Well, that's not completely true because if you are not the weather channel or, for example, um, a, a bank exchange uh, showing bank exchange rate where people are not trying to identify what is the, the content overall, just want, they want to try uh, to know the exchange rate or the weather for today, they're, they're not going to click on that result. They're going to see that result and that's it. But if you are... Um, or you are offering services or other products, this kind of result. And the very good news for today is, of course, these feature snippets, they are the fundament for voice search. Yes, when we are entering a query by voice to our search device, um, to our um, Google device, Android device, or uh, our Google Home, the first result, the first uh, response is taken from feature snippet. So yes, you need to be there. This is kind of a big deal to be on those, those kind of results. So that's why it is important to be there. And of course, let's try to understand the results of our um, research. How um, these feature snippets are organized. So we found out that there are three types of... The first one is the paragraph feature snippet, which is the uh, query. Um, the result is a search query. Uh, the result is a feature snippet with a paragraph. That's pretty much it. Also, an image here. So we have a paragraph and an image. But the thing is that many times, uh, also as in this in this result from my uh, good friend uh, Robbie Richards from Australia, um, the the URL is giving me. The, the, con the text from the, the paragraph, the text from, the, from his URL to this paragraph uh, snippet, but the image was taken from another website, was taken from Search Engine Watch. So why this is happening? So Google is forcing some images that they are already formatted to be on a, on a featured snippet. So from URL, what happens if people are going to click on that image? So people are going to go to the URL uh, that belongs to that image. So we need to have that uh, those parts in a very good shape. The the format, um, this, the, the really specific size for the image, and of course our text formatted for those um, feature snippet paragraphs. I'm gonna talk more about this in a few seconds. Um, type of feature snippets are, the, um, as the name say, the list. Uh, what they are? So this is a list feature snippet. We have uh, ordered, uh, ordered list or unordered list without any numbers or, or letters. So here we have kind of more information because it's more structured. You have the first one, the second point, the third one, and also if you can see here in the image, we also have this is a good result because the image and the uh, the text from uh, the list is from the same URL. So well done. This is a um, this is a good uh, this is a good result because it matched uh, the the result and the image the feature snippet content and the image. So the first one was the paragraph. The second one is the list, and the last one is the table feature snippets. For this kind for this type of results, we can see a beautiful big table uh, below um, of the carousel of pictures um, where we have a lot of information as the year, the name. Um, the name of the uh, of the player. My search query was World Series MVPs, 
and here you can see that all the information is there. This kind of results is really great for um, different type of content, uh, for bankings, for um, uh, different uh, types of um, gober uh, um, government structures that they uh, can show um, the time when their offices are opening and closing or if they want to, sh to show uh, when they are starting their um, offices um, they, they like job and of course all, all sorts of information that is well structured on a table. This is also another great uh, feature snippet result. So what type of keywords have these uh, feature snippets? Because okay, not all the keywords uh, they can uh, trigger feature snippets, but there are a lot of them that are really, really good. Let's see here. So for the first part, we can see that the, uh, in our research, 41% of them, they are, uh, tri they are triggering these feature snippets, 41% of them. So that's <coughs> like half of the question that uh, we can ask to Google. And this number is increasing all the time. The second portion of keywords are the preposition um, keywords. So if you have a keyword, a long take keyword, a long, long take keyword with a preposition, that also triggers 17% uh, of um, feature snippets. And the comparison keywords as well. The comparison keywords are also triggering 22% of feature snippets. So there are other type of keywords that all are also activating. We can call them other keywords, 7%. But the question, preposition, and comparison are the ones that are right now are triggering those feature snippets. And this is, let's say, inbound marketing about the buyer's journey. Why? Because imagine when you're searching for some product that you are not aware about if you need it or not of service, but let's say you're interested of, you are uh, first asking Google some questions about uh, why this um, shoe is, uh, why this bicycle is uh, green, I, I, I don't know, any, any question. Why this um, iPhone uh, doesn't have a, a dual SIM card or anything. You're going to ask questions to Google. The second one, the second part, uh, and that's the awareness part of the buyer's journey. Um, the second part is the preposition when you're asking something with more details. For example, iPhone without um, SIM card, without, uh, or for example, um, bicycle. Inter specific search queries with prepositions are really good for the second step of the barter journey, which is the um, we are with the awareness, we are the, with the consideration. So when people are considering something, they are searching for some specifics of the products or services. Uh, that they are searching. And the third part is the comparison feature snippet, uh, the comparison keyword, sorry. The comparison keywords are really good for the final stage of the buyer, buyer's journey, which is the decision, the final decision of buying. You're comparing, okay, the price of the iPhone or the price of uh, the Samsung, which is better, or which, which is better, uh, winter bicycles or winter wheels or um, all seasons wheels. You are comparing two types of Uh, products that you already researched for, you already inter pay for it. So show me the price. So let's go with the first with the first uh, type of uh, mm, keywords. The question feature snippets. So the question feature snippets um, are triggered by questions like how. How is the biggest one. That's why we have a different column in um, in this graphic. How is triggering a lot of uh, feature snippet in the mode, in the type of list or paragraphs, as you can see here. This is an exception of the rule. How uh, triggers a lot of list feature snippets. With the rest of the uh, uh, question keywords, for example, why, are, will, does, do, can, is, and should, uh, they are triggering mostly uh, the paragraph feature snippet, as you can see here by the percentage. 99, 99, 98, 97. Uh, um, so how is kind of something different 
uh, because it's triggering something different, um, at least um, more. That's what. Th that's why this is a rule. So, question feature snippets are triggered by this type of keywords. The example that I have here, of course, is one of my favorites, is why is the sky blue? You can ask that in any other language, for example, in, let's say in Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, uh, French, you will receive also a beautiful feature snippet in their own languages and, of course, an image. And I really like this, this result. Um, so 41% of questions they have, uh, they are triggering feature snippets, and this number is growing. The second portion of feature snippets are the uh, of keywords that are triggering feature snippets are the preposition feature snippets. So let's let's take a look of some of them. So the prepositions are to Christ. Why? Positions for, like, with, or without. We can see here that the number of lists here is really big and it's proportional to the number of, uh, to the amount, to the percentage of paragraph, but in some cases is more. And we saw something um, interesting during our research that most of the content that they already have a uh, list on there is more uh, the probability to have a feature snippet increase a lot so if you don't have any kind of list on your content you are uh, waiting a lot of, you are losing you're wasting a lot of opportunities try to have lists on your content that's a good sign to google that you are willing to uh, um, receive uh, or to trigger to push a feature snippet uh, like to uh, without with and of course other kind of um, prepositions I don't know how many are in your language um, but this one are that we found in English that are triggering triggering a lot a lot of feature snippets and of course this is the example let's say iPhone without SIM card as you can see here at the first uh, result the first line we have uh, the ad from uh, Google My Business from uh, from shopping. This, this are shopping ads with the prices of um, GCM uh, from SIM cards. But the second result over there is still very visible because you can see the paragraph of the feature snippet and the image is of course a feature snippet, and this is really good. We are not asking any questions to Google. We are just uh, adding a preposition into our search query, iPhone without SIM card. And he's, here the explanation is really, really great. Why don't you complete the SIM card from the old device and so on, so on. The third portion of feature snippets of keywords that are triggering feature snippets are the comparison feature snippets. So the comparison feature snippets are really, really good for the final stage of the budget's journey, which is decision. Why? because people are more willing to buy from you and people are more willing to give you uh, to give you their money here. So that's why we have higher conversions here. This is really good for e-commerce e businesses when they have on their content different triggers, different key keywords that are triggering comparison. For example, um, the keywords that you need to have here are compare pricing, price, com comparing, And maybe they are the same in your in your in your response. We have all that here, for example, versus like so like compares uh, like for example instead um, others. This kind of feature snippet, this kind of keywords are activating mostly the paragraph feature snippet. So for um, paragraph uh, text, let's see an example here. And I really like this example. So this is for a for a ring. We, you, if you're trying to understand uh, which kind of diamond is better the princess cut versus round so i'm not asking not anything here i'm not uh, adding any um, preposition i'm just triggering this result with the uh, keyword versus which is also a comparison uh, trigger here so we have the first result
installed, of course, Google Shopping, the installed, also very visible, is snippet, which is great because it's, uh, it's uh, solving my problem, telling me Princess Codes are generally considered more contemporary uh, stones, are considered more contemporary than traditional uh, round cut. Okay, I can make my own deductions on that and say, okay, I will go with Princess Codes. And that's it from the comparison feature of snippet. So the next question should be, how can I get my content, uh, my content formatted so people and Google will understand that um, the content that I want to send them, the message that I want to send them in the form of a feature snippet. So let's say, if you want to make Google to understand that you want to create a feature snippet, let's take the these rules. In our research, we saw that the, for the paragraph feature it should work from 46, the maximum word that we find out here is 84. Go for the average, 46 and a little bit, a little bit less. For example, in this, in, in this, in this uh, result here, we can see 43 words. And it's very understandable how can, um, how many companies in Canada, for example, and we have 43 words. We don't, don't have any images, uh, which is not bad, but still, if you can have a, any image, will be will be good. So 46 in average, that's the amount of words to receive a paragraph. After the question, after the uh, the header, after the, the headline, create paragraphs in the range of four or 60 words, no more. You need to be very clear with the message. Why? Because the information needs to be very simple to understand it, to make people to go to your URL, to your own web page, more specific with the information that you want to um, give to your users. So people are gonna click on the result to receive more, or people are gonna go to another result. And of course, nobody likes uh, giant walls of text in a feature snippet. Uh, that's uh, that's the rule. Google is not gonna put the content that you have in a feature snippet if you have more than 60 words. And of course, uh, during our research, we saw also that the best performers, um, the best uh, to, the top pages that are receiving uh, most of the feature snippets, they have very a very good structure, um, hierarchy structure on their content. So we saw 22 headers and subheaders. That means that most of them are using um, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, and so on. So the structure, the hierarchy of the content is very specific. So this is not, this. you cannot apply this for every piece of content. You need to have content that is meant to be for information, uh, for uh, comparison, or for uh, decision. So create uh, informative content based on a very well structured um, hierarchy base of content. And of course, we saw that most of these uh, results, uh, these web pages, they are ready to migrate or they are ready secure. 83% of them, they are using HTTPS as a secure web page. Of course, this is something really good for people. So 83% is the average, well, is the uh, score that we found out that <clears throat> uh, these feature snippets uh, receive from the Flash King Kite formula, uh, from the uh, Flash King Kite reading level formula, and the people who can understand this uh, are from the seventh grade. So our uh, kids, 11, uh, 12 year old kids, they can understand this type of content. So if you want to uh, learn more about the Flash King Kite formula, you can just enter on Google what is Flash King Kite formula and what is the um, uh, the, the range of the, the percentage, the more difficult or more easy to read for people, which kind of people, uh, kids, adults, uh, uh, bachelors, doctors, and so on. So the content that you need to create in this type of result, for this type of result, needs to be very easy to understand for an 11, uh, 12 years old kid. 
And this is something really interesting overall. Why? Because we also a robot. Of course, of course, it's a robot. Why? Because we 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 saw that in every single image that was um, pushed to be on a feature snippet, all of them, all of them, they have an alt text explaining what is on that image. So no matter that we are in the uh, 2019, still alt text is really important for images. If you don't have that, Google is not gonna use your image, it's not gonna use um, uh, the picture that you choose for that content for a feature snippet. So, and in every single page we, that receives feature snippet, we saw at least 12 images and all of them with all text. Also, this is quite um, the average among so back, as we, we, we call them is 33. So the content needs to be really, really good. You need to um, mention uh, with a link a lot of good resources. So it needs to be a kind of research. You need to guide your your users to really, really um, authoritative uh, research, um, domains, authoritative uh, web page uh, for um, for backlinks. So that means that, for example, in a in a piece of content with three thousand letters, the amount of um, words after a, 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 a link needs to be uh, one hundred and thirty-five words. You need to include a link if you are writing something for three thousand, not three thousand, uh, three and a half thousand of words, relatively good piece of content. So 33 external link citations in that um, piece of content that you're willing to share. So that's a lot of information, but that's something good. A lot of times I also hear, uh, and I also said to, to some colleagues in the past, um, we're writing a new blog post on wh whatever. Put on that content uh, three or five links, not more. No, but for receiving feature snippets, we found out that there are 33 external links. So that's a lot of information. That's why I was telling that <coughs> this kind of um, pages are not uh, willing to apply for every single page that you have. This is for the most impor important informational pages that you should have about your product or services. The second part is the list snippet. So, for the list snippets, we found out a number of items five to eight items. But here is the but: uh, if you are using more than eight items, I mean eight points on your list, Google is gonna be forced to cut that result and give you that bottom that says more items. So let's say um, you have the top. Um, 10, uh, the top best uh, Netflix series from 2018, for example. Okay, that's really good. You're going to have that feature snippet. Uh, you can put uh, otherwise the number, the, the numeration, for example, the number 10, number 9, number 8, and uh, where is the number 1? So people are going to... Um, Be forced to, to click on that because everybody everybody wants to see why you can use it to force um, Google to cut that result yes that's um, how we, we can do it okay I have a question here no I don't have a question sorry um, of course the comment here is you need to use longer longer list more than a items to use that um, feature that Google um, can enable more items about them so that's pretty much it and for the table snippet uh, is something really similar so here we find out that the number of arrows and the, the number of rows and the number of columns they are kind of very similar as well um, five uh, rows maximum uh, seven uh, columns three maximum four but of course you can use 
more of these um, rows and columns uh, that bottom again. And let's say, create tumbles that Google will truncate or cut the results. Use more than five, row five rows and seven columns. And that's going to be something really good if you are uh, trying to show um, the schedule of your offices, um, the schedule for uh, your um, school, university, or uh, whatever you have planned to do, you can show in a table. All the information that can be in a table can receive a table feature snippet. And let's say, what is the perfect size for the image? So we saw that in uh, Google was telling us that the, uh, the best size for the image needs to be landscape uh, image uh, four to three. But four to three is kind of very um, big in the sense that you can have this as you can have this aspect radio for different type of sizes. But nobody uh, knew nobody knew how uh, what is the best result. And we found out this is the best result. This is the median size, the average, every single image that we saw with the with this size, 600, 600 wide and 425 high, they received a feature snippet. All of them. So go for it. This is the uh, size that um, will give you a feature snippet. So the, your paragraphs, uh, Google uh, is not, uh, Google will not force another image to be shown with the paragraph of your feature snippet. Go for it. Use this size. And of course, if you have a um, copywriter, a uh, blog editor, if you have someone who is working with your content and you're willing to create those pages that are uh, meant to be for feature snippet, just go with this list. For the paragraph feature snippet, for this kind of results with question keywords with or with um, uh, comparison keywords label, and don't forget to uh, apply this for the images too. So this is the uh, cheat sheet. Use it with your team. But there are another type of results. This is uh, something that our friend uh, 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 Gurich was uh, telling us. He invented this term. This is the feature snippet hub. So a feature snippet hub. What is that? So let's say we have a, a normal page here. And of course, this is a very popular uh, healthcare site with a content that is already uh, formatted for feature snippets. But when we are entering this um, URL into SEMrush, let's say, um, we found out that this single page is triggering 478 feature snippets with their respective keywords, of course. 478 feature snippets only for one single web page. So this is a feature snippet hub. This is a feature snippet, a big source of keywords. So how you can create this type of hubs? Of course, you want to have this one if you want to have a lot, lot of people uh, checking your content. The first rule for this, we found out that is more, most of them, they have adopted already HTTPS. The second one is 89%, they have social activity. So these type of pages are really, really great for sharing, for likes, for um, um, creating backlinks, for mentioning on, on, on the SERP. And of course, these type of results are really, really great if you are willing to use list. If you are, if you have list, so 95% of, of, of them, they had list on their some other thing. If you don't, if you are not using lists on your content, you are not willing to. You are not. Um, you are not matching to have a feature snippet and also a feature snippet hub. So use more than one ordered and unordered list. That's really helpful. And of course, the um, mobility score is very friendly. The scoring is very friendly, and the speed needs to be really, really fast for mobile and good for desktop. We are, of course, in the mobile uh, first index area. But we have another box. And this is the last um, part of the results when I was searching at the, uh, the first time if I can drink tap water in any country. So uh, we have the feature snippet and we have this kind of box. 
And this is a result, this is a research we made for, for the UK, because for the United States, um, and this is something really new. Uh, nobody's talking a lot about this, but instead of this, we, we wanted to um, analyze 1 million keywords in the UK database. Let's say, uh, what is a PAA, or people also ask. So, I was uh, trying to identify uh, what is the tap water. If I can drink tap water, I, ha I receive at the first, or the zero position, the um, feature snippet. The second one is the people also ask uh, uh, result. So, PAA is not a feature snippet because they are not there, but they are very similar. Also, people also ask, it's not a, a related search, which are at the bottom of the first page of Google, first of the second, sometimes. And also, people also ask our other questions to my main question. So, why is this salty? People also ask, say, why the seawater is salty, why that sea is not salty, how much salt is in the ocean? So with this kind of result, Google is trying to understand if I'm more interested in this topic or maybe I'm more interested on other kind of questions that my first uh, intention was. So the, this is the anatomy of this kind of result. We have the question, we have the answer, which looks like, uh, like a paragraph. We have the URL and of course um, the, search, um, the search for question link and more questions. So, Let's say here uh, the percentage in um, the UK, for example, is like 42% of the keywords that we have analyzed for uh, about 500,000 keywords. They have people also ask for mobile is uh, a little bit more, as you can see, for uh, 443,000 uh, keywords. Uh, and of course, these results are growing every single uh, day. If you can see here, um, the results, uh, the, the number of positions of these questions in the PAA box are really, really, um, really, really good. Why? Because we can see first two, three questions, but more of the, uh, more of the people are, when they're pressing the bottom, more questions are appearing after the fourth question. So they are going for that and they are uh, checking their numbers. Uh, the numbers of these questions are unlimited. So what does mean is that if you're clicking on a single question, those results are gonna be uh, appearing more, those questions are gonna be more, and the number is endless. So more and more questions about the topic, related topic, uh, semantic topic related to the thematic relevance here is about uh, let's say Halloween or something else as I will show you in a, in a, in a couple of seconds more uh, Google is gonna check all the aspects all the questions that uh, were asked on Google any any single time so the search uh, volume in uh, PA presence is kind of in the UK uh, very low for now so 10 100 people searches searches per month but most of them um, are not used uh, very wisely, I will say. A lot of um, agencies that I ask or a lot of um, companies that I ask if they have uh, people also ask on their content um, vision, so their content plans, they say, no, we're not using anything of that. So they are here just because a coincidence. They don't know they're, they are appearing here. So if you can format your content to be here or to be a feature snippet, you are um, uh, prepared to be in a people also ask result as well. Let's see here, these are the, con the, the questions that are triggering the people also ask mostly. As you can see here, this is something that is happening all over the world. Most of the people are, are asking uh, symptoms or a symptom uh, to Google using Google as a doctor. So with every single symptom of um, um, diabetes, Symptom of, uh, I don't know, uh, VAH, symptom of um, cold, whatever symptom, all the people are asking that to Google. So that's the first uh, question triggering uh, all the um, people also ask box. And then you can see definition of something, definition of marketing, definition of weather, definition of whatever. Also, that's the kind of triggering. Uh, 
also what, who, which, and so on. So let's see the anatomy of this kind of results. Um, anatomy is very similar. The structure is um, the same as the feature snippet. Paragraph, list, and table. They have people also ask a result as well. Um, in mobile devices, they are the same, but mostly for paragraph in mobile devices. So this is something really interesting. If you can see here, more of the results uh, that are activated in the paragraph are for, um, for desktop, but also we have a lot of them for mobile devices. And the number of words, the number of characters is, uh, is really, really um, similar. I will say is completely mostly the same. Sometimes we saw that Google is triggering not only, uh, as you can see, um, if you uh, have time, uh, my colleague Aleida, she was publishing um, the list uh, of the Fed list of people also as box. So we have two lists. In the same result. So using list is something something really really good. This, this is the presence on the industries right now. This is for the UK. So you see this uh, for your own country. You can go to SEMrush and see the sensor tool that we have and SEMrush sensor and see how many uh, where are the in, uh, industries where they are asking more questions. As you can see here in the UK, most of the questions in mobile are asked for the health industry yes our previous speaker was um, telling about how to get fit how to um, uh, weight um, how to lose weight for example those kind of industry are asking a lot of questions and you can use all of these this kind of uh, industries for questions uh, mostly all of them they have their own questions but some of them are more advanced for the type of results and of course for the types of the format of the content that people are creating for those uh, for those results. And don't forget this, this kind of results are really good holes for creating visibility. And we have some good news here. Uh, you don't need to have any kind of good rankings here. Google is taking these uh, people also as box from the top 100 results. So if you are in the second, third, fourth page of Google, doesn't matter. If you have your content um, structured and formatted for this kind of result, Google is going to push you and it's going to show on the people also ask box. Here you can see another features that also have, that also came with people also ask box. So the feature snippet, um, mostly 80% of them, they have features um, people also ask box, the local pack, the carousel, top stories, top ads. So mostly all other surf features, they have people also ask box. So this is something that it is growing really, this became it's becoming really, really big on the industry. You can see every single feature snippet, they are triggering people also ask box results. And of course, most of them, the most of them, they don't need to be on the first page of Google. Suddenly, Google is, is, is giving opportunities to everyone. If you created a web page uh, yesterday and the format is good for a people also as box, you're going to receive your people also as box. Wow. You don't need to have, for example, for a feature snippet, you need to be at least on the top five. five results. This is also for mobile devices. It, no matter if you're in the first going to receive, your people also ask box. How to benefit from this? So let's go through with the final part, how, how to do this. First, you need to identify the right keywords for your business, for your industry. There are keywords that are triggering questions, um, prepositions and comparison uh, keywords. So keywords that have already featured snippets, you can go to Keyword Magic Tool and check your uh, the keywords that you want to uh, rank for and check if they are triggering feature snippets. That's very easy. You can use um, the feature snippet uh, filter here, or you can go uh, to your competitors with organic research. Here you can see how many keywords your, competitor, you, your competitors are triggering right now for feature snippets. Maybe your competitors, uh, they don't know 
that they are having their triggering feature snippet. So that's something good for you because you can uh, reformat your own content and get those feature snippets. And another thing, for getting a feature snippet, this is the percentage of probability if that you will have for a feature snippet. So for the first, second, third, fourth place, uh, fifth place, or the, the percentage, the probability is more. But sometimes Google is taking for the feature snippet for uh, from the ninth result, uh, for, from the ninth position, from the second page. So is sometimes it's kind of randomly, but the format is still uh, important there. Or you can use your own keywords that you have already in form of questions. I bet that you have, if you have a website, you have qu question keywords. Use them, format them to get feature snippets. And of course, format your content for feature snippets. Step number two, how to format, create list. This is kind of a result that I really love. This is how to change attire. So here you can see that Google is showing not only the feature snippet as a first instance, but also different type of tires for a car, for a bike, for a, for a motorcycle. The people also ask both. But here the, the position, the ranking number one is no more important. You have all the results, all the information in one single feature snippet. Third. Turn your authoritative pages into features where you want to have a feature snippet have. That's like the evergreen content that you also need to have in your on your web page. This is the uh, the list of uh, steps that you need to apply in order to uh, have a feature snippet have. Uh, make it succinct, scannable, paragraph, uh, the number of paragraphs, the list, uh, the size of the images create a feature snippet have with the best performers with the top content that you have on your uh, website four you need to target your pages to get a feature uh, feature snippet have about any um, um in your landing pages about your main topic about different characteristic of your characteristics or social aspect of your main topic uh let's say you're talking about um facial surgery um, your other characteristics need to talk, your other landing pages need to talk about different characteristics. The, the social demographic, uh, the prices, um, the, and in the main page, you need to talk about everything uh, that is included with your service, face uh, or nose uh, surgery. That's the thing that you need to create. That's the happen and spoke model. And the last one is the amplify uh, for social signals. This kind of results needs to be really good for people to make and understand how well you are our content. And of course, oh, I just lost my, okay. How well they are interested in your own, in your own content. So you need outreach to increase social signals, um, external and where to look for data. Well, you can look also on SEMrush sensor. Here you can see in every single country, let's say if you are in Jamaica right now, you can enter and create a project on SEMrush and go with your own website and see how well is your industry going with people also as both with feature snippet or with any other SERP feature. Or you can go uh, one by one by keywords, which one of them are um, triggering, activating this SERP feature. Or you can choose um, different type of results with uh, organic research here with um, with the filters for feature snippets. And of course, try to identify those feature snippets that are related to your industry, not only to your website or your competitor's website, to your whole industry. You will have, have your topic, but you don't need to work only on your topic. Uh, work on a superior in, in um, thematic based uh, topic. Okay, we're talking about shoes, um, designers, something that is more uh, relevant, not only for your own uh, audience, but for all the industry audience. And of course, this is the final thoughts. Google is changing their search engine to an answer engine. So this transformation is really interesting because we are not uh, we are now seeing more for answering your questions so if you don't have this kind of text content you need to create it people are looking for this kind of of, of content 
you need to create more more interesting stuff that is semantically in integrated in the the whole aspect of your website you are talking about uh you know curators talk about your blog it's about travel don't talk about don't talk about politics for example and this is gonna be really good for your traffic this this is boosting a lot of companies today we as a company are using this strategy to gain more feature snippets so we have people who are actually uh, formatting the content of our own blog to gain get feature snippets and if you have any questions anything always you can uh, search me on any social um, network or in direct uh, email uh, as i uh, given you uh, here thank you very much Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation, Mr. Fernando. Uh, kindly share your email ID uh, so that the participants can uh, um, get your get some suggestions through email. And uh, Mr. Fernando, please hold on line. Dear participants, if you have any questions, please rise in the chat box so that uh, Mr. Fernando will answer immediately. Dear participants, you if you have any questions, please rise it in chat chat box. Okay, how can I increase my SERP rating? Well, first rule to increase the SERP rating. Oh, sorry, I'm stopping my camera. Oh, no, I'm starting my camera. Uh, the first thing to increase your SERP rating, so your rankings, is to create really good, relevant content. That's, that, that's it. But the format of your content needs to be uh, relevant, not only for people, but also for Google. A lot of people are telling, create only content for people yes but not only Google is still the platform that we all are all using to um, to perform better our results so create content Cre and create content formatted for feature snippet because that's the trend today okay thank you I can see a couple of comments okay Thank you very very much. I'm showing once more my email. If you want to contact me or try LinkedIn or try my email, if you want uh, to ask some questions, I'm always happy to uh, answer. Uh, dear Mr. Fernando, we have another question. Uh, what are pricing keywords? Well, when I was talking about the pricing keywords, I mean those keywords that are actually that price or um, the, the comparison keywords that are um, pricing for goodies, pricing is the word with another kind of information. So pr uh, iPhone price, um, bicycle price or price um, prices for, for bicycles. So that's the kind of words that people are using to understand how much I need to pay for the product or for the service? Price of the service. That's kind of uh, that's the kind of keywords that are using that term, price. Okay, what is the fastest uh, way to rank a keyword? Ads, Google Ads. That's the fastest way. If you want to have um, to rank a keyword, uh, of, of course, that's for uh, paid traffic. If you want to have uh, your, your keyword on number one. Uh, you need to pay to, to Google for your ad. But if you want to do it organically, you need to wait a couple of weeks or sometimes a couple of months or sometimes a half a year or a year. That's for organic results and that's for creating content. That's for creating really interesting content. But if you want to have results tomorrow, you need to create a good web page, a good landing page and um, create your um, Google AdWords account, your Google Ads account. Okay, I have another question. Can I know uh, is clocking uh, what? Clocking. 
Well, I'm not sure what you mean with that quest question. Clocking. What, what's clocking? That's your question. What 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 is clocking? Okay, it's okay, uh, Mr. Fernando. Uh, we have another question. What are the most yeah. important Google ranking factors? Yeah, the most important Google ranking factors, of course, are those that uh, most of us we don't know. But we have a research in, uh, well, we don't know because Google is not telling that because that's the big secret of the industry. But the most uh, common ones are, let's say, links. That's the most relevant uh, today. Maybe tomorrow it's going to change, but today's are, are backlinks. The number one is site pit. Uh, the third one is um, the content that that, that, it, that, it, that you have match the semantical level that you can have with your topic and the fourth one um, if we're talking about um, this era is mobile mobile friendly page if you don't have that so everything will be lost there are like 200 other type of factors but let's say that those are the uh, top three ones